Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about dealing with a non-responsive network card. Hopefully, you'll never have to deal with this, but I did, and I thought I would share you the journey I went on. Now, this episode is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that's not going to affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, we're going to review what I did on my install, how I got around it, and then the more permanent solution. Now, if you get a screen like this, uh, as they say, Houston, there's a problem. You should see toward the bottom of that screen an HTTP slash slash and an IP address. If you don't see that, then it's not seeing the network card. Now, I'd read the hardware requirements, and Freenas said that, you know, just put an Intel, just have an Intel card there. Well, the Gigabyte motherboard that I have has an Intel chipset on it, but apparently it's one that hasn't always been known to work. So what was I going to do? It was a weekend. I had nothing else to, to go on. So I just happened to have a USB network card, actually USB-C. So I plugged it in the back and let's see, let me get back over there. And I still, Still got that screen. So here's here's what I did to get around it. And this is, you know, I'm out, at this point, I'm on a non-supported network card. I'll, I'll freely say that. So if we do to uh, go to configure network interfaces and UE0. Now, the fact that it saw that is good. It would never see the integrated or built-in network card. So if we do that, press 1 there. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the, the settings because it when it discovered it, it could have discovered something wrong. So we'll type yes. And okay, still didn't work. So let's go ahead and go back in UE and we won't say remove, but we'll say configure for DHCP interface name UE zero. No. And now see there it comes up with the IP address and we'll confirm that everything's working right by switching over to the management PC that I've got set up. And let's go down to here, root, and then my password. And if we click enter, and I'm not gonna worry about that warning. So the fact that it came up is good. So, Let's scroll on down here, and this will start to help you see where part of the problem is. If you look down here where it mentions the interface, UE0, okay, link state unknown. It, it says it's not reading the full data out of the network card. It doesn't show you media type, doesn't show you subtype. It's not giving you a lot of information. Now, I did put this one in when I first got mine up and running because it wouldn't discover my network card, like I mentioned earlier. And it ran fine until I shut it down and then like it forgot its settings again. So that's what told me that I needed to have a proper network card. And thanks to some of the folks on the FreeNAS forums, I went and got this Intel card. And it was about $40 on Amazon, so not bad. But apparently they're not all cards work. So I was very careful to look at the specifics of the one I was going to use. And this one, it says it's a server adapter. Don't let that bother you. This is, uh, it's a I210 series. Now, the thing that you will want to pay attention to, if it's an authentic network, an authentic Intel card, it's gonna have a QR code. And what you can't see with this label right here easily is there's a series of letters and numbers on here. And you can take your smartphone, scan that QR code. It should take you to a website or you can go to the website directly and punch in those letters and numbers. And if it's an authentic card, it should come back and tell you that everything's okay. Now the picture may not match, so don't worry about that. 
So this is the next step that we're going to go to. And it comes with two different brackets. It's I'm going to keep the long bracket that's on here. This is more for the, the smart, sorry, the short form factor system. So this one should go right in and then we will go on to getting it up and running. Okay, well now I've got the network card put in. So let's switch over here and I'll show you the results and drop that. Now it did, I had to do one extra step and it, I, before I started the camera up again, I wanted to make sure that it did hold the settings and this time it did. Now the first time it came up, it did not report an IP address automatically. And I'm going to look into that one because I would have thought it would have, unless there's something about my network. Then uh, what I noticed too, and unfortunately I can't scroll back on the messages, I noticed an IGB0 uh, message that came up. So that said it saw the card, and of course I was looking on the back and the link light and the network speed light came up and were flickering. So that's good. So let's go over here and let's enter our credentials in. And we'll see the rest of the process. Now, here's IGB0. I didn't have to change that at all. I just told it I was going to configure for IPv4. It is now showing media type Ethernet subtype 1000 base T. So it, it's and it's now showing link state up. So that really is that's an improvement. So there may be something with the card I've got. I'm going to do some more digging into that one, but at least it shows you that for this time it did the settings that were here did survive. So once I entered that address, I didn't have to hide anything. In fact, let's just go ahead and show in the process of getting this down here and I'm trying to you well know, yeah let's all right there we go and found the network card so we're just going to do a reboot just to show you that it the settings did survive because on the USB C Ethernet one that I was using and let's shift over here just make this a little bit bigger this is what I have been using as a temporary measure. And this is the one the settings did not survive on. So whatever it found, it wasn't enough for it to, to save it. And now it's coming back up here. And it should come back here in just a second. And it doesn't take that long to, uh, to start up. I'll go ahead and enter to kind of help give it a kick in the seat of the pants. And this way you can see the IGB zero message when it shows up and I'll try to call it out for you here so that there won't be any hopefully you you'll be able to see it right as it comes up right now it's discovering all the USB stuff and it's finding the ultra fit that it's booting off of this is the part it hangs for not hangs it it, it pauses for like so oh, two, three seconds, it seems like. And then it goes right on up. And it should be finished here in just a moment. Yeah, uh, there's IGB0. Okay, right there at the bottom of the screen. Okay, that's seeing the network card up. And it's going to import the ZFS system off it sees off the existing drives. And there you go. So it's it's finding everything that it needs. So that's a good sign. That's definitely an improvement. And I only had to enter the IP address once. Uh, tell I tried. I'm thinking I told it to destroy the connection. That didn't help. But I put in the IP address. No, I didn't tell it to destroy. So I was going to configure it. And then it uh, put everything in and came right up. And you can see here by the uh, management system that it did. Uh, do exactly what it was we told it to so let's just enter one more time here and okay we'll scroll down here and so as they say 
Uh, Bob's your uncle. That is definitely an improvement. Not a bad price for the network card. So it was well worth the, the cost and the time of doing it. So hopefully as we move forward, then uh, we'll see some definite speed improvements because it took several days to m copy the information over from my other uh, NAS into this one. So I'm kind of wondering if that wasn't part of the, the, the network card being kind of touchy wasn't part of it. And we'll, we'll do some more experimentation with that. So that really is, took a little longer than I had hoped to show you, but at least it gets things up and running. If you're watching this video on YouTube, and you probably are if you're seeing this one, you're going to see videos on the screen now that are the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.